Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Amanda Zitto, and today we're going to be reviewing this bamboo sketchbook from Pentalic. Just kind of starting off just like looking at it, it is a hardbound sketchbook. I personally prefer hardbound sketchbooks just because it's a little bit nicer when you're resting your hand in it to not have some kind of spiral in the way, especially when you're going to draw on the other side of the page if you're right-handed. Or in the case that you're left-handed, having to rest your hand on a spiral can be kind of obnoxious. So I'm a big fan of the hardbound. It is an acid-free cream-colored paper. It's supposed to accept all dry media. We'll experiment a little bit with some wet media later to see how it holds up to that and some markers. And like my first instinct is actually just to smell it to see if it smells different than a regular sketchbook. It doesn't. It doesn't really smell any different than normal paper. The texture is a little bit rough. So I'm interested to see how finer pens will lay lines down on it. It's not like handmade paper, it's not quite that rough, but the texture is definitely kind of toothy. So I feel like this would be really great for charcoal. I'm excited to test it out. I do like the idea of it being more sustainable and wasting less resources than normal sketchbook production. Bamboo is a much faster growing resource than trees. I mean, just think about how many trees I've killed just with the amount of sketchbooks that I've had since I started drawing, let alone all the paper that I used in art school and oh my goodness. I think it's important for us, even as artists, to be very mindful of the materials that we're using and the effect that we're having on the environment, especially in this day and age. Wow, that got dark. Let's just get into sketching. Yeah. <laughs> So I think first we're gonna flip to the back and do some swatches and see if any of it bleeds. So we'll start with a regular Ticonderoga pencil. Oh, it's kind of dark. It's nice. The texture is nice with pencil for sure. Some Prismacolor pencils. My microns. Oh, I see. Okay. So it looks if. It kind of feels like the fibers in the sketchbook are kind of absorbing the ink. You can definitely see how like the texture is affecting the line a little bit. Can you see that? I feel like making big black spots is going to be really easy because the paper kind of absorbs the ink a little bit um, in a good way. So point one. The point 0.1 is not having as much of an issue as the point 0.5, so it's staying fairly thin and nice. The point 0.5, the, the micron point 0.5, the ink seems to just kind of go in and sink into the paper. It's like, it's not bleeding on the other side, so that's good. But my Pentalk illustration pens, the point 0.5, it seems to be doing really well on this paper. Now the question I'm sure lots of people are curious about is if it will bleed. These are literally the only Copics that I own and they're quite a few years old now. Just for posterity's sake, we're gonna test the markers to see if they bleed through. Oh yeah, but it's not showing up on the other page either. Let's try something else. Let's try darker colors. Green. So it is bleeding through this page, but it's not coming onto the other page, which is encouraging. It looks like I have a little dot. Let's try it. Let's make like... So there's like, if you go heavy on it, it seems to have like a little bit of bleed through. Not a whole lot, it's just like a little bit of spotting. Which is still better than a lot of other sketchbooks. And this is a really dark, high intensity color. So yeah, you can see where it's like super soaked through the paper here and like where it's coming on here. The lighter colors didn't. Let's try the green again. Oh, there it is, it did come through a little bit. So overall, not that bad, really for a paper that's really meant just for dry media. Now the test that I'm a little 
little bit excited about. I don't have high hopes for this since it's really uh, only meant for dry media. But just for curiosity, we're going to test this and see how it holds up to some wet. It is starting to buckle a little bit with that big swatch, but I'm kind of impressed. Let's try layering color on top of this one and see if it... There we go. Now that I have a couple layers on it, it's starting to buckle. But ultimately, like, you know, if you're just going to, like, lay down like a quick layer of color or something like that. I don't feel like it's going to destroy the paper either. So I also have these Tombow markers. Let's see if they bleed through at all. Those don't bleed through like at all. I'm gonna believe these are water-based, aren't they? Definitely won't be dry on the back of all of the pages, but it is also not coming up on the other page either. Let's try this water-soluble pencil. That's definitely buckling too. Not that I was expecting it to do anything else since it states pretty plainly on the front that it's for dry media. To be charcoal pencil. This feels really nice. This seems like it would be a really good sketchbook if you work a lot with charcoal or graphite. That does make a really nice texture. Like the texture of the paper just like feels really nice. You would definitely have to spray some fixative on it. I feel like it would probably rub off on the next page a little bit. You can see just a little bit of it rubbing off. So if you traveled with it a lot, this would probably rub off on the back of the page before it. So probably a sketchbook where you'd want to only draw on one side of the paper <laughs> and uh, leave the backs blank. But that charcoal does feel really great against the texture of the paper. Yep, there we go. So this drawing crayon. <laughs> so it's not super toothed because it doesn't grab everything from the crayon. There's a lot of leftover on top of the paper. But it's textured enough that it makes drawing with charcoal feel really nice. I think I would just be really careful about making sure that you spray fixative on it or even taping a layer of vellum down on top of the drawing so it doesn't rub off on the back of the page before it. But I think that I've done enough testing now and I think that it's time to sketch. So I know that it's spring right now. But I have been on a kick lately where I really like to draw old, gnarly dudes. <laughs> so I found a reference photo of a old sailor and uh, that's what I'm going to draw today. I don't know what it is about old, old wrinkly men. There's just has a lot of character and I think that there's something really cool about that. When I'm drawing faces, I like to break them down into more generic shapes. Like the nose is a big triangle and particularly like the little gap between the eye and the nose. I like to make a little uh, rectangle right there to remind myself that there's like a big piece of flesh <laughs> that kind of rolls down the face and meets up with it. Remember to fix your drawings, kids! 
so there's the first one. I started it with Prism Color Pencils and then I finished it off with um, a Contact Crayon. Texture definitely lends to like thicker dry media like charcoal and Contact Crayon a little bit more than pencil, but just to be fair and do a thorough test, I think I'm going to do another doodle and try to do it with pencil and ink like I normally do. So just something that I noticed while working on this ink piece is that if I let the pen just sit on the page for too long, the ink just kind of seeped in and spread out. So like... There's things that I really like about this paper. I like how soft it is. I like the texture specifically for like thicker dry media. Pencil sketching on this was really nice. Sketching in ink was really nice if I didn't need it or want it to be super crispy like when I do my line work on vellum. I normally do my finish line work for like big posters and that kind of stuff on vellum because I know that those lines are going to be clear and crisp when I scan them and they're going to be really easy to clean up. So I wouldn't necessarily use the sketchbook to scan and make finished pieces with, but I don't think that's the point of sketchbooks really. I think sketchbooks are there so that you can explore and practice, you know, dr drawing anatomy or trying to learn how to draw something that you don't normally draw, like landscapes or people in landscapes or that kind of stuff. Um, I think sketchbooks are really great for exploring new ideas without the pressure or the hassle of trying to create something that's finished and refined that you're going to show to a lot of people. I think sketchbooks are a really personal thing and I think that this is a really great sketchbook to do that kind of practicing in. Like the paper, it feels really nice, but it also doesn't really carry that pressure that I kind of feel with more expensive sketchbooks that I have to make something really pretty and beautiful on every single page. Like I don't know about you, in some of the more expensive sketchbooks, I'll kind of get stage fright. It was really expensive to purchase. Sometimes that just makes me feel like I can't perform well enough. Like I don't deserve to be drawing in that kind of sketchbook because it was so expensive. So oftentimes I'll try to start in the back of the sketchbook to try to deter that feeling that I just, I'm not worthy <laughs> of the sketchbook. But I don't feel that way with this one. I feel like the bamboo sketchbook is really affordable and the paper is really nice and I like that it's acid free which means that it's going to age really well and it's not going to yellow like a lot of other paper but the fact that it was so inexpensive and that the paper is soft I don't feel that pressure to make every single sketch absolutely perfect and beautiful and finished and refined and I think that's really important in sketchbooks since they really should be your place to practice and and if you feel that pressure to have to make everything really pretty and perfect because this sketchbook costs so much money and the paper is so good and that kind of stuff you're not really going to experiment as thoroughly as much as you would in a sketchbook that doesn't really cost that much and can just kind of be your companion because it's really well made. It's not going to fall apart on you. I think the sketchbook would be a really great budget option for art students who have to have a different sketchbook for every class. I know that I struggled with that while I was in art school having to have multiple different kinds of sketchbooks for different classes and it does add up quite a, quite a lot, especially when you have to have like three or four different sketchbooks every single year of art school. And on top of that, having to buy materials for final projects and that kind of stuff. And in reality, the work that you're doing in those sketchbooks for classes is really just thumbnails and, and figure studies and that kind of stuff. I know that I have a lot of sketchbooks that are just filled with throwaway thumbnails and that kind of stuff, but I feel like this sketchbook would be really great for that kind of exploring figure drawing and creating thumbnails for bigger, more finished pieces. Stuff like that where you're creating really repetitive work 